All I want is you somewhere far away from the cold night air. The possibilities for building livable emergency houses are only limited by what's available to us at the time we start to build. The more choices and materials that we have at our disposal means we often build bigger, nicer, and even sometimes permanent houses. In Mongolia, Gertie means make yourself at home. I'm Nikki Rapana, and I make myself at home in Alaska. My original Gertie design concept was to combine a Mongolian gur with what I understood to be an American teepee, although now I know that teepees were in Mongolia also. But part of my experiment with alternative and recycled materials was worked out beforehand in miniature. Gertie has the same frame whether the wall slats are five inches or five feet and twine or plastic zip ties will hold for all sizes. Before I built my full-size 20-foot Gertie, I built a 20-inch model of it. One winter spent in a 16-foot Gertie with my daughter and her newborn son had convinced me I needed to go bigger. My next model had 7-foot walls, 6-foot doors, a 14-foot center, and a loft. As it had turned out, the biggest challenge was not building the structures, but in creating a functional and livable space out of a round room. I began filling the new model with scale furniture and dolls to give the space perspective. Raised in the West, my experience in yurts was limited to what I've read and seen online. In fact, the first one I was ever in was my own. I really needed practice, so I started using the scale miniature girdies to become more familiar with the entire process, each step involved in putting one together. And as the project progressed, I began to use it in experimenting with better building materials. By placing fat posts on the inside of the lattice or the can of walls is what many yurt makers refer to as the wind package. Posts are set every two to four feet along the perimeter and this also allows you to eliminate a portion, if not all, of the canna. It's easier with the canna though because you can easily secure the post to the walls with ties and you probably wouldn't want to remove the canna entirely unless you're building a more permanent structure. A 20 foot diameter girdie is about 314 square feet. If you place a post every 5 feet along the walls, then you need 15 posts. Between each post, you can place a sheet of any material you want to try. This model has wood salvaged from a dollhouse miniature, so it hopefully shows how pleasing they can become using some of the nicer, gently used scraps. I found doors, windows, and um, some nice uh, finished wood in that kit. The point of the whole presentation that we're given today is I'm convinced that as long as you can maintain the structural integrity of the original yurt design, which mainly is the tension cable at the top of the walls and the exterior wall ropes over everything on the outside, I think it's possible to use parts off old buildings, abandoned vehicles, glass and plastic bottles, torn tents, plastic tarps, vinyl, canvas, clothing, bedding, grass, mud, rocks, <laughs> bricks, and whatever else we can find. I believe if it doesn't work, we just take it down and put something else up in its place. And if the walls are in four foot long pieces, they can each remain portable and individually designed to the desires of the owner. Emergency shelters that turn into year-round or long-term camping don't have to be a miserable life experience. Gerties can start out rustic, but with better materials, 
They can also be upgraded into very comfortable rooms. While many people around the world had kept the cultural knowledge about how their ancestors lived and survived, I am from the USA and I was taught nothing about building round huts. My Prussian and Norwegian relatives 500 years ago may have known how to build round houses, but that information was never passed down to me. My studies tell me man has been building his own houses out of available local materials since the beginning of time. Modern movies, especially Hollywood, usually depicts these dwellings as dirty hovels lived in by dirty peasants. The splendor of the Arabian tents, the beautiful woodwork and quilting in the Mongolian girs is just not what we Westerners are supposed to see. The emerging global government insists it is their job to provide everyone with safe and affordable housing. But what they don't want to teach is that genuine self-sufficiency begins at home where we live. Control over our home environment used to be a fundamental liberty enjoyed by all free Americans. And I think our institutional founders made a big mistake when they denied American Indians and Natives the core piece to sustaining a vibrant culture, which is building little huts and living in little villages. Today, we don't know how to do this. We don't even know how to start building our own communities. And if we don't start building them, the global government is going to insist that they're the ones that are going to build us the nicest communities. The rights of the people to be secure in their own homes just can't exist if they don't have a home to be secure in.